Much has been written about the recent convictions of Gary Dobson and David Norris for the murder of Stephen Lawrence. After 18 years, compelling new evidence meant another trial. Previous trials had resulted in acquittals because of lack of convincing evidence. The judge, Mr Justice Curtis, ruled that the testimony of the main witness, Duane Brooks, was unreliable. This was a Daily Mail headline at the time, described by some as trial by newspaper. Recent media headlines seem positively gloating and have drooled at the triumph of finally nailing criminals. Few other murders have followed this pattern. According to legal experts, to describe an incident as racist only requires someone involved to regard it as such. As pointed out in this Newsnight crime, clip. It's very subjective. The definition of a racially motivated crime is any crime in which the victim or anyone else perceives it to have been a racially motivated crime. So it, it is very subjective. In practice, however, this doesn't seem to be the case. There have been many ethnic murders of white victims that have not been designated racially motivated, even though the evidence points to it. And here are some of them. Pete Woodhams, aged 22, was shot dead in Canning Town in August 2007. This followed months of harassment by the killer, a black youth. Police had failed to respond to many reports by Mr. Woodhams and his family. As usual, racism was never considered. Andrew Holland, aged 16, murdered in Farnworth, Manchester by a black and mixed race gang in August 2007. Only one thug was convicted and no media outcry to get the rest. Racism was not mentioned. Ben Hitchcock, aged 16, murdered in Beckenham in June 2007. Observers reported a large gang, mainly black, armed with iron bars. No media outcry to find the killers. Racism was never considered. Ben Kinsella was aged 16 when he was knifed 11 times by three black youths in June 2008 in London. Racism was never mentioned. Billy Ward, aged 21, murdered in a Croydon bus in December 2007. Stabbed many times by two black youths, his father insisted this was a racist attack. Christopher Yates kicked to death by a gang of Asians who shouted, We have killed the white man in November 2005. This crime was still not classed as racist. Christopher Fawkes, aged 36, battered to death by a drunken Asian thug in Blackburn in May 2009. Racism was never mentioned. Danny O'Shea, aged 18, chased and knifed to death by a gang of black males in Canning Town in December 2011. Racism was never mentioned. Gary and James Proctor, father and son, killed by an Asian drunk driver, Imran Hussein, in August 2008. Jack Large, aged 14, knifed to death in Chigwell, Essex, in November 2007, by two black schoolboys. Racism was not mentioned. James Houliston, aged 44, murdered in Hackney in July 2007. Police wanted six black and Asian men, but no one was ever convicted. There is no media outcry to find the killers. Racism not mentioned. Kate Beagley, aged 32, murdered near Watford in June 2007 by a black male. Racism not considered. Keith and Matt Cowell, murdered in Bishop Stortford in August 2007. Two Asian men were seen driving away and two women were also seriously injured. Keith Brown, aged 52, stabbed to death in front of his family in Stoke-on-Trent in July 2007. The killer was only convicted of manslaughter. Racism was never considered. Kevin Beckingham, aged 35, an epileptic, murdered in Plumstead in August 2007. Racism was never considered. Martin Dinnigan, aged 14, murdered in Islington in June 2007. His attackers were five black youths on bicycles. No media outcry to find the killers, and racism was never considered. Mary Ann Lennigan, aged 16, gang raped, tortured and murdered in Berkshire by six black males in September 2005. The word racist was never mentioned once. PC John Henry, aged 36, murdered in Luton in June 2007 by a black male. Racism not considered. Richard Everett, aged 15, chased and caught by a gang of 11 Asian youths in August 1994. Only one of the gang was convicted. No media outcry to get the rest. Racism was never considered. The convicted man, Badrul Mir, was allowed out of prison to attend a wedding in 2006. Robert Knox, aged 18, stabbed to death by a black male in Sidcup in May 2008. Racism was never mentioned. Ross Parker, aged 17, murdered by a gang of Asians in Peterborough in September 2001. The judge did say this was a racist attack. Samantha Anderson, aged 29, murdered in Newcastle in May 2007 by an Asian asylum seeker. Racism was not considered. Stacey Westbury, aged 23, murdered in West London by a serial rapist, Christopher Braithwaite, in front of her baby son in 2008. 
Racism not mentioned. Two murders on the same day. Anthony Walker in Liverpool made the national news headlines. Anthony was 17 and black, and the killing was described as racist. This crime led the national news for weeks. But the death of 28-year-old Richard Whelan failed to make any of the national news bulletins. Richard was killed by a black male on a London bus. This crime was not called racist and was quickly forgotten. Both murders took place in July 2005. Yet the BBC defended its actions, saying the two murders were very different, as if family tragedies can be listed in order of importance. There are many other white victims of ethnic murderers. This was only a selection. To these cases, the media gave only a fraction of the publicity given to high-profile cases like the Stephen Lawrence murder. To understand why, we need to ask these questions of the judiciary and the media. Former Sun editor Kelvin McKenzie endorsed this view when discussing the appalling racist murder of Chris Donald on Newsnight. Now, Kelvin, you've written about this. You feel quite strongly that it is an overlooked area. Yes, I mean, it's, it's utterly disgraceful. Uh, doesn't matter with television, BBC, ITV, Channel 4, doesn't matter who it is. National newspapers, including my own, The Sun, have not covered, uh, by the way, no radio national bulletins. None of them have covered that disgraceful crime in Glasgow. None of them. One paper, I think it was the Times, page 20, about three weeks ago, ran it. I know there's complications in it, but not, if that had been the other way around, disgracefully, it had been uh, a young black lad who had been pulled off the streets, uh, knifed and then burned alive. It would have been a huge, correctly a huge story. Why doesn't it happen the other way around? The Stephen Lawrence murder has commanded media headlines many times over many years. It was a terrible and brutal crime. Terry Gregory was 19 and murdered in Woolwich in 2003. Edwin Grant, a 65-year-old black man, stood trial and admitted carrying a knife on the night of the murder. He also admitted looking for Terry after an earlier altercation, but was not convicted. It was decided there was insufficient evidence. Terry's mother said she felt in the same position as Doreen Lawrence, the mother of Stephen Lawrence. The prosecution tried to insinuate that Terry Gregory may have had a racist tendency. But there was no evidence to support this, not a scrap. It's unlikely this case will ever be progressed. Does this demonstrate fairness? And there is no media outcry to find Terry Gregory's killers. Should we ask why not? There is no doubt that if you, are, if you believe you're a victim of, 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 of an ethnic minority and you're white, there is nowhere to go. Editors, I think, are so liberal that they're scared to be seen that they're moving to the right of their paper so that when something happens to somebody, why, oh, well, that's over there. But correctly, they report a, 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 a black victim. And the, the problem is, all I'm asking for well, is that they Here we are in Eltham High Street um, talking to the public about the Stephen Lawrence case, the conviction, as we know, a couple of weeks ago of two men. We wanted to ask people whether they thought that that conviction was safe, bearing in mind they had been pursued for 18 years. And the chief prosecution witness in that case said that it was highly likely the evidence could have been contaminated. Why is it that the Stephen Lawrence case has generated such publicity these last 18 years and yet Victims of white murders, such as Terry Gregory or Richard Everett, nobody, the British public's never heard of them. Have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? No. What about Stephen Lawrence? Yes. If I was to tell you that Richard Everett and Terry Gregory were white lads killed by ethnics, why do you think the authorities gave the Stephen Lawrence case all the help and resources needed over and above other murders in London? Probably so much publicity about it, I would think. Have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? No. What about Stephen Lawrence? Yeah. If I was to tell you that Richard Everett and Terry Gregory, the white lads, yeah. killed by ethnics, yeah. why do you think the authorities gave the Stephen Lawrence case all the help and resources needed over and above other murders in London? Well, I ask them myself that they're being racist against the whites. Yourself. What, the authorities? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? No. What about Stephen Lawrence? Yes. If I was to say that Richard Everett and Terry Gregory were white lads killed by ethnics, 
Why do you think the authorities have given the Stephen Lawrence case all the help and resources needed over and above other murders in London? I wouldn't have a clue, but it's all wrong. And what about the, uh, the case where they, uh, because of the Stephen Lawrence murder, they changed the law so they can try somebody for... Because obviously he's stitching them up. Obviously stitching again, he's stitching out the white people and that's all he's doing it once do, again. Do you think that uh, by, by allowing the prosecution of somebody more than once is an infringement of people's liberties? I don't. And yeah. Yeah. Thanks very much. Madam, have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? No. What about Stephen Lawrence? Of course. Oh, it's the same thing. Thank you, but no thank you. Have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? No. What about Stephen Lawrence? Yes, I do. If I was to tell you that Richard Everett and Terry Gregory were white lads killed by ethnics, why do you think the authorities gave the Stephen Lawrence case all the help and resources needed over and above other murders in London? Why then? The media, I think, the media, the media. yeah. yeah. And, the what, and what, through political correctness? Yeah, had it, yeah. I think uh, in terms of uh, this, uh, the, regardless of the colour of your skin, they should be treated of fairly equally yeah to be perfectly honest i think it's uh, it's part of the politically correct madness in our society today we have to give priority to all the so-called ethnic minorities who are so-called victims and are victims no doubt but white victims they're not so important they don't count uh, that's my sincere view people could not tell you the name of one white victim in this country of a racist attack or murder, they wouldn't know. Have you ever heard of Richard Everett or Terry Gregory? Never. And what about Stephen Lawrence? Yeah, obviously, yeah. Well, if I told you that Richard Everett and Terry Gregory were white lads that were killed by ethnics, um, why do you think the authorities gave the Stephen Lawrence case all the help and resources needed over and above other murders in London? Well, you know why. <laughs> and everyone knows why. You don't really need me to tell you, do you? It's always been the same, always will be. It's the same as everything. I'm not racist at all, but I know this. Do you think on. that uh, white victims just don't get a fair crack of the whip? Of course they don't. Yeah. Of course okay. they don't. It's, they're killed all, all the time, but you don't hear nothing about that. The repealing of the double jeopardy laws is also, in a lot of people's opinion, an infringement of our liberty. How many times will the establishment be able to go after people and try them? And will that extend in years to come to political dissidents who don't agree with what the establishment are doing? In my opinion, these are very dangerous precedents being set in society today. And it really is up to the British people to assert themselves to win their freedoms back. There is a tendency to describe crimes against ethnics as being racist, but not when the roles of perpetrator and victim are reversed. The examples shown earlier bear witness to this, so why the disparity in media coverage? The media have a glaring case to answer. There's an element of celebration to the recent frenzy of media reporting. They are pushing the two convicted men to the limit, even suggesting they will get lighter sentences if they implicate others. Since when does a newspaper implore the police to get the others? And why should a newspaper advise only selected killers not to sleep easy in their beds? Is this justice? Is it really? And if so, does it demonstrate fairness? They say the Stephen Lawrence case is still not over. If that's true, then neither is the matter of disproportionate reporting and media bias. Let the media take note of this. The British people will not forget this insult to justice and fair play. Murderers must answer for their crimes. The British media will also be held accountable for theirs. Thanks to the capriciousness of the UK press and media, David Norris and Gary Dobson were prevented from having a fair trial. They were on trial for murder, but the media also put them on trial for being white. There are examples, and the Donald case in Gla Glasgow is one of them, where something has gone horribly wrong in the reporting of it by national television, radio or print. But the editors should hang their heads in shame. Okay. In uh, if you believe you're a victim of, 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 of an ethnic minority and you're white, there is nowhere to go. 